Galaxy S23 Ultra has a crazy telephoto lens that allows you to go from really wide angle to a super close up. And this got me thinking. I want to see the limits of the Galaxy Ultra phone. That's why I made this series of videos where I test and discover the new features and test the Galaxy against pro cinema cameras such as RED and even an iPhone, of course. I'll cover everything from photo and video capabilities to image stabilization, editing and post, and so much more. As an iPhone user, it's a refreshing product for my eyes. And today let's see how the S23 Ultra will perform against this 70-200 Pro lens and if it can keep up with almost $5,000 camera setup. Now I have to say in some way I have become a victim of the influencers market and here on YouTube because everyone says that the S23 Ultra has 200 megapixel camera, it fills in 8K and has 100x zoom when in reality it is true but there is a catch. And judging by these comments from my previous video, I'm not the only one who got it wrong. Listen, the 8K is great, but it's not available with the telephoto zoom lens. You can only use it for wide angle X1 lens. And 100X zoom, well, yes, technically you can zoom in 100 times, but only in photo mode, not video. And the final image at the 100X, well, it looks like this. But good news is that S23 Ultra packs an insane amount of cool features, some of which you'll see in this video that make up for all the shortcomings that I've faced. Now let's see how the telephoto lens performs in the photo department. So guys, we arrived to the spot. You see we have the beautiful view right here. I'm gonna be using this Galaxy S23 Ultra and testing it against the 70 to 200. Let's see how it compares. I will be installing it on a tripod, getting some vertical portrait shots for the shorts as well. And most importantly, let me know if you can tell which one is better because obviously this is a more expensive setup with the lens. But at some point when everybody is watching on the phone, this difference is not really visible. So let me know if your eye can spot it. Let's go. So here are the photos and keep in mind the quality difference is more visible on a bigger screen. So if you're watching this video on the phone, it will probably be a bit more challenging for you to guess the camera right. Which one is the Sony and which one is the Samsung Galaxy. So ready? Let's go. I don't know how about you guys, but I had really hard time telling which one is which. Especially since I use the expert raw mode, I can edit the Samsung photos in a way that it's almost identical to the Sony camera. Oh yeah, I edited them on the phone as well. So you see with the right skill, this phone can give you almost identical results to this $5,000 camera setup. There are ways to tell the full frame camera though from a crop sensor. Like if you look at the wires here, this photo is from Sony. It has more depth and blur separation whereas the Galaxy just keeps everything in focus. I showed this photo to my subscribers. Well, they chose the Galaxy phone over the Sony and their feedback was it just looks crisper, it looks sharper. But also it's important to mention that sharpness and detailization are not the same thing. So while Samsung might have more sharpness in the photo, the Sony has more detailization in the photo because you can always increase the sharpness with digital artificial enhancement, but you cannot increase detailization if the optics isn't that good. So that's where I realized for the end viewer, it's not really important what I use to take the photo with. It's more about my personal convenience when I take the shot. So I have to say I got more consistent results with the Sony camera while the Samsung, well, it takes more effort to get the shot look like the pro setup. So keep that in mind, even though the result come in very close, but the work behind the camera that I put in is different and Galaxy needed more of my attention. Though if we talk about the versatility, here the Galaxy takes the lead of course, because it offers not only the telephoto lens, but also wide angle camera with its 200 megapixels, which I will cover in the future video where I compare it to the RED camera. I think in that video I put the Galaxy phone to its limits. It's crazy footage I got. And trust me, with the right lighting, I made the Samsung look almost like the red camera. So yeah, make sure you stay on the lookout for that video. When I just started using the S23 Ultra, I was very skeptical of how I'll get used to the Android OS because I'm coming from the Apple world. Well, let me tell you one thing. The camera interface on the Galaxy is really good. 
If you're familiar with the camera basics, you'll have no problem adjusting all the settings. Though I wish the phone didn't change its settings every time I close the camera app or switch between the camera modes. I have to say it's rather unusual to have a zoom this powerful in your pocket and knowing that you can zoom in on every little detail, especially in such a beautiful city like Prague, where every corner is full of beautiful architecture. Okay guys, now let's move to the next location and it's about sunset time right now, I think in 30-40 minutes. I I hope we'll get more vibrant colors and let's see how color accurate this phone is how the color representation is and compared to the iPhone as well so yeah let's move over there let's go you see how beautiful this shot is it's super crispy and the colors are just beautiful and it's because it's the 70 to 200 lens of course now let's use the same framing and see if the S23 Ultra can keep up with it Well, you guys can judge for yourself, but I think it looks incredible. There is a secret to this shot. I use manual settings and tripod. With the handheld, there is a little problem with this phone, which I'll show in just a little bit. But for now, let's just appreciate how beautiful Prague is through the lens of this phone. Let's do a quick blind test and yeah, let me know guys if you can tell which one is the phone and which one is the camera. Let's go. Look, it doesn't get better than this and the footage is just spectacular amazing now be honest guys how many of you guessed right i personally had problems when looking on the phone telling which one is which but i'm sure some of you guessed everything right maybe i think the telephoto lens is just perfect for creating layers with the foreground and the background plus it's an awesome way to test if the image stabilization on this phone is any good let's have a look all right guys now let's see how good the image stabilization for video and i chose this spot specifically because one i like it i used it in my previous videos but also it's really good to demonstrate how good and important the the photo lens for this kind of shots because we get more compression you see we have here some buildings in the foreground and some buildings in the background and I'm gonna be using 10x lens let me hit the screen record right now now I will be trying to walk back and forth side to side to see if the image is stable or not and I will not be using the manual settings I will be using auto settings because I'm panning up and down the exposure values are different here and I don't want that to be noticeable in the video let the phone do the job for me let me know what you think. It's not gimbal shot, it's all handheld. Let's go. Now, a very important thing I discovered here is that it seems like the image stabilization on the S23 Ultra relies heavily on the digital processing, which needs an overcrank shutter speed, meaning that the stabilizing algorithm needs the footage without any motion blur, which makes 180 degree shutter angle rule useless as well as the use of the ND filters. And actually, they can result in the image being worse, introducing more jitters and blurry image on this S23 Ultra. Which means if you're planning to film a lot of handheld footage, then the higher your shutter speed, the better the image stabilization will work. And you can really tell the depth in this frame. It's all because of this compression and telephoto lens. And unfortunately, the 8K is not available for this camera. You can only use it for X1 main wide angle lens. I don't really like it as much. So either way, let me show it to you. So two important things, guys, for you. Why would someone want to film in 8K if the file size is so huge? Well, first of all, I don't really know, but I guess that if you want to crop, so let's say this is your frame and you want to cut part of the image out and zoom in a little bit without losing the resolution, you can do so if you film in 8k but another thing I noticed on this Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is that the preview image quality isn't as good like when I'm looking here the image quality looks actually like 480 you know on YouTube it looks like from the phones back in 2010 2008 it looks really crappy but once you hit record button and you finish filming then you go into a gallery and the image completely transforms into something else this I don't really like about this phone it feels like you know there's something off about the image I want to see my footage as I'm recording it I don't want to see like lower resolution of it if you know what I mean and it feels a little bit weird when filming especially in 8k so the preview quality I have 
have to say is way better on the iPhone 14, 13 Pro even. Um, yeah, let's move on. I might be a bit harsh on the S23 Ultra because sometimes I forget it's not a pro DSLR lens on the camera. It's just the phone that offers so much versatility. And it takes a lot of time for me to test the phone in different scenarios. But I have to say, even though it is my first, very first Android phone, I genuinely expected it to be more complicated. But so far, everything works great except for one thing, and it's file transfer. It's the biggest pain for me right now with this phone. The built-in smart switch app, it always fails, and other options I simply don't know yet. And yeah, I really hope that some of you could share a useful way down in the comments with me. I would really appreciate it. So when it comes to finding the perfect traveler companion for my photography and videography needs, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is more compact and offers way more versatility with its telephoto zoom lens because it has every single camera you can think of. It's also less expensive than the Sony 70-200 GM system with the camera together. However, the Sony, well, it offers better image quality. It has flat profiles for color grading for video with more dynamic range and it's just overall more professional, delivering more consistent results. Though it's also much more expensive and bulkier than the Galaxy S23 Ultra. So it really depends on your personal needs and skills because in the right hands, you can make the Samsung an ultimate travel camera for capturing your moments on the go. Now guys, if you watched my unboxing video, then you know that I was very excited about the stylus in this phone. And now it's become one of my favorite features. It reminds me of the pocket PCs I had in 2009, 2010. And it's just perfect for editing the photos on the go, selecting different masks and stuff, but I will save it for the other video next week. So make sure to stick around and meanwhile, you can watch this video right here. I'm sure you're gonna love it. Yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week, bye-bye.